What is going on everybody, it's nothing but skills. And in today's video, I'll be showing you five builds you can make to help you beat the raid in eight minutes. Yes, I said it eight minutes because who wouldn't wanna beat the raid in under nine minutes? If you wanna beat it in this fast time that you're seeing me post right now, well, these builds will help you get to that place. So I'll be showing you all five builds as we get through the raid itself. So I'll show you the eight minute 32 run that we did and then before each section that I switch my builds, I'll be showing you what build I go to. So I run five different builds during this raid. I run a Tarmac build, I run a Boomer build, a Lucy and Buddy build, a Razorback build, a Weasel build, a before Lucy and Buddy build. So I'll be showing you every single build in this video. So the first build we're gonna dive into is the Tarmac build. Now this build is made to go fast. You're putting out as much damage as possible in a short amount of time and getting through the Tarmac is key so we are running 11 offensive one defensive and five utility and i'll show you where i can tweak this build to make it that much stronger because a lot of these builds aren't 100 percent done because i've been tweaking them i've been i stopped messing with them after i did that run of eight minutes and 32 seconds so for the gun we are using the famas it has 18.5k base damage 900k rpm we do have sadis on here that's going to give deal 30 percent weapon damage to bleeding enemies we have Jazz Hands for that 10% reload speed. You can switch out for Allegro and then for the holster talent, whatever you want. We have the 8% damage to the Elite Hollow Sight. We have the 7% critical hit chance on the Underburrow. We have the 5% damage to Elites on the Muzzle. So that means we're getting 13% damage to Elites just on the weapon itself. Plus we have the 20 round mag. For the mask, we are running the Healer Guard mask. This is gonna come with Night Watcher, which is perfect spotter. We have 20% weapon damage to pulse enemies remember we do have a teammate that's always going to be running tip of the spear and a teammate that's always going to be running aces and eights so with tip of the spear we'll always have somebody pulsing for us so we have 51 percent damage to elites on here we have a yellow road on here and then we have a utility monster you definitely need these two yellow roads here if you're going to hit that five utility now if you can get skill haste on these rolls that's going to be better because that'll let your skills come back quicker so you can swap through the builds because that's going to be the biggest issue swapping through the builds and continuing on for the chest we're running a femoris chest this is going to have headshot damage critical hit chance weapon damage then we have vigilance so we gain that 20 percent weapon damage taking damage disables his buff so we're not going to take any damage because we're putting out a lot of damage and you'll see when we get to the tarmac and then we have hard hitting on here for that 25 percent damage to elites plus we have a defensive mod slot and then i have armor total armor and health on there for the holster we have a douglas and harding holster we have a three piece so this one's going to give us six percent accuracy we rolled 14.5 percent critical hit chance you 16% is going to be the max if you can get it on there. We do want critical on here, that 15% critical hit damage. And then in this one, we do need to have a utility mod slot. That'll put us at three utility. For the knee pads, we do have our first piece of wyvern. This is going to give us 7% critical hit damage. We have 7% critical hit chance on here too, plus destructive for that 40% um, explosive damage. And then we have offensive mod with that AR damage and weapon damage. For the gloves, we are running our second piece of Douglas Harding, and this is going to give us 10% um, critical hit damage, plus we have assault rifle damage, skill power, and wicked. When we apply a status effect, we get that 15% weapon damage for 20 seconds. Now, these are some horrible rolled gloves. If you can look right here, 2% assault rifle damage, you guys can get better than that, so you can definitely improve the build right there. But as you guys are seeing in the video, once we get to the tarmac, I'm going to be melting stuff. And for our final piece is going to be the third piece of Douglas and Harding. We're getting 7% critical hit chance. Plus, we have 5% critical hit damage rolled on here. I rolled 14% critical hit chance because I want to be maxed out on critical hit chance on this build. We have spark damaging enemies with skills or explosives grants 15% weapon damage. Then we also have self-adjusting. This is where you could put um, Harding on here if you want. And then we have the offensive mod that's going to give us AR damage and weapon damage. For the skills, I'm running the Stinger Hive because that's going to apply the bleed, right? And then I'm also running the Defender Drone because that's going to keep me up because I have nothing that's going to be regenerating my armor or health. Some of the key stats, 59% critical hit chance, 62% critical hit damage, 64% headshot damage with 89% damage to elites plus 65% explosive damage. Remember, a raid that's 8 minutes and 30 seconds goes by really fast. So that's just something that you guys need to keep in mind when you guys are watching this video. And right before we get to each section, I'll show you the build that I'm running. 
once we get further on into the raid, you'll notice I'm only switching one or two pieces, so I'm just going to focus on those one to two pieces. Now, once you get to the tarmac, this is the build that I just showed you. We will be pushing straight through, and this goes quick. We're putting out a lot of damage. We do have the team split up into four sections. You have the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, and your goal is to destroy everything in that area. Remember, there are some key enemies that do come out so that is something you guys will figure out but just know we do split up into four different sections and we have our assigned sections that we need to take out once we destroy our sections right once we take out our current sections our goal is to head back to the helicopter because the helicopter comes in and that is the final enemies that spawn in so once you destroy these you guys can head all the way to the next section and Look at that. Look how fast that was. That, that is moving. So we already finished the tarmac. And before you knew it, you guys probably closed your eyes and were like, what? What just happened there? And then we get into our next build. Now, this is my boomer build, the sniper build. You usually have one to two to three guys running this. So one to two. if two guys hit, it will drop boomer. Three guys is more on the safe side. So this nemesis hits at 586,000, right? We have 11 offensive one defensive and five utility. One thing you notice through all the builds, we're either running perfect spotter or spotter. On this one, we are running the Healer Guard mask with the 51% damage to elites, a yellow roll, plus that perfect spotter, and then another utility mod slot for two yellow rolls. For the chest, we do have a three piece of raw that we're running. So this one's gonna give us 10% accuracy. We have 11.5% headshot damage plus 15% weapon damage. And then we have perfect vigilance. That's gonna gain 30% weapon damage. Taking damage disables this buff. It's always gonna be active. Don't worry, you're not gonna take any damage. And then we have the offensive mod that's gonna give us marksman rifle damage, damage to health, and weapon damage. Plus we have a defensive mod slot on here. So we have armor, total armor, and health. We get into the holster. The holster is going to be the first piece of out summit. This is going to give us 13.5% critical hit chance. You can get all the way up to 16% here. We have precise for that 15% headshot damage. And then we do have a utility mod because we need to make sure that we have enough yellow. So this is going to be our third yellow. Plus we have a offensive mod for marksman rifles and weapon damage. For our second piece of Veraldi, these are going to be the knee pads. So this is going to give us that 10% headshot damage. Plus, we have 21% skill haste on here. We have composure. While on cover, we're going to gain that 10% um, total weapon damage. You need to have 11 more offensive. We do have that. And then we have an offensive mod that's going to give us marksman rifle damage and weapon damage. Now, for the gloves, we are running Alps gloves because it does give us an offensive mod. So we're going to have 15% um, rifle damage. Sorry, 13% marksman rifle damage. We have Wicked. When you apply a status effect, we gain that 15% weapon damage, right? And then we have the offensive mod for the marksman rifle damage and weapon damage. And we're going to be able to proc that Wicked by running a Stinger Hive. Now, for the backpack, this is our third piece of Raw D. So we get that 10% marksman rifle damage, 9% weapon damage, 5.5 critical hit damage. We have hard hitting for 25% damage to elites. We have that sparked for an additional 15% weapon damage. And then we have another yellow for our fifth and final yellow to activate Perfect Spotter. For the skills, we are going to be running um, the Stinger Hive. So the Stinger Hive is going to activate Wicked, cause that bleed, and then you can run whatever you want. I have a chem launcher there. Just to show you the stats real quick, we are running a Nemesis. The Nemesis is going to have 13.5% um, critical hit chance, 46% critical hit damage, 217% headshot damage. And then if we go all the way down, we're running 91% damage to elites. Now, once you're in the boomer area, this is going to go quick. This is right where you're going to switch to your second build. And you'll be able to do that because of the booster hives. They'll help the cooldown on your skills. So I'm going to throw out my hive. And that is my stinger hive. And I'm just waiting. The snipers usually don't help shoot unless you have like one guy like this hanging out. You don't want to waste that aces and eights, right? So I have mine ready. I'm marking him with the nemesis. You're going to see the mark come up. If you look at all the statuses I have going on, vigilance, aces and eights, composure, wicked. Boom, we call it out, we're good to go. And then we're gonna continue on to the next one. It's that quick, that's how fast that section is right there. Now I wouldn't recommend switching your build till you get past this section. Um, you usually have guys running the booster, so you're constantly dropping it. Everybody's constantly moving. And 
by the time you get to the next section is where we're gonna switch you just run right by this it's that quick guys you're moving so quick you're just really focused on getting to the next entryway because you're gonna have enough time to switch your build now one thing you'll notice is you can run the same exact build as the boomer build or you can make some small changes to it like the build I'm about to show you like I said you can run the boomer build but there is another build you can run in its place. We're just switching out the gloves. So for the gloves, instead of running Wicked, we would just run um, Precise for that 15% headshot damage. And then on the holster, we would be running Devastating. So that is the two that you could switch there. And the reason being is sometimes that Wicked doesn't catch the enemy. You're not getting that 15% extra damage. So just having Devastating there is going to be a better because it's guaranteed you can hit the boss before he even drops down so those are the only two changes with that build so it's really up to you decide what you want to do play with both see how they work for you how hard you're hitting um when you're not proccing that wicked so definitely um this one right here i am running the wicked build so i throw down my stinger hive right next to where he's going to drop down at and then i get into the position now the good thing if you were running the other build is when i hit him up here I'm, uh, he's not going to have Wicked active, right? So that's just something for you to keep in mind. So yeah, so our goal here is we need to get his armor down. We're waiting for the other side to drop their boss first. So we can't fire yet. Now we're allowed to fire. They, they, they finished off their side. So we're going to drop our boss. Once we drop this boss, we only have the main boss, Weasel. And then we just have to hit him a few times. And there it is. And then clear out the ads. And it's that simple. Keep the small boss on the left. Armor down. Finish off the boss on the right, then finish off Weasel on the left. That simple, guys. Pretty easy to do. And then once you do that, um, you really don't want to pick up any kind of loot during a speed run. But, you know, it is what it is. I just picked up some loot. So we continue on, and we are going to switch to our next build. Now, this is going to be our before Buddy and Lucy build. It's going to be similar to the Tarmac build with some small, minute changes. And I'll show you that in a second. But ideally, you just want to make sure you're able to switch your build. And the reason why you have a lot of booster hives too is it's helping your skills go on cooldown so you're able to swap. So this build right here is almost identical to the Tarmac build except for the gloves. Now the gloves that I was using for some reason they got deleted. So the first change is instead of running a stinger hive, I'm going to be running a booster hive. And that's going to help out my team push through this area. Now ideally though, if I am running a stinger a booster hive i can't run wicked right because i'm not going to be putting any kind of status effect so you're going to run something like devastating on um, precise or maybe even obliterate that's going to be up to you figure out what you want and the gloves that i was using they got deleted i i had a, a set of precise gloves and i guess i deleted them and i had a set of devastating gloves and i guess i deleted them but yeah ideally that's what you want to put there instead everything else is exactly the same as the tarmac build Something to really keep in mind is not everybody's running the same build. We always do have aces. We always do have a tip of the spear. But we do have um, slight variations of if you can see like some skill builds. That's why you see like the seekers go off. But a lot of people are running um, some form of the builds that I, I have been showing you guys. So we're going to keep pushing through here. Straight damage. Um, I'm running that booster hive. For me and my teammates, if I don't get their booster hive, I can drop mine. And the same thing with um, the defender drone is for me. Since I don't run a clutch build, we don't run a clutch build. You don't need to run clutch on here because of the fact that you're just putting out so much damage that the defender drone's enough for you to drop everything in front of you as long as everybody is putting out that damage, right? So as long as everybody's focus firing, as long as everybody's aiming at the target you'll see how fast these targets just drop it's just it's pretty impressive it's pretty crazy to see now you guys still have some time it isn't march 3rd yet so if you guys have the pieces laying around if you guys want to test this out you typically can do it with um three maybe three builds you guys could have some pretty pretty quick times and that way you guys can farm that eagle bear now remember all of us on console have ssds so, um Everybody on this team has SSD, and that's why we're able to load in that quick when we do fast travel to the guy who's way ahead. So if a guy takes off and he's at the next point, we'll rather fast travel to him because it's a lot faster, right? The next build we're switching to is the Buddy and Lucy build because that is our next boss, and this build is focused around the SVD. Now, one thing that you see a lot of people run, 
I'm running lucky shot on this one, but they do like running perfectly naked because when you do deplete your armor, you gain that extra damage. So that is a talent that a lot of people run instead. Of. So if you do want the extra damage, you'll just use something like the oxidizer. And then what they'll do is they'll deplete your armor and then you'll gain the extra damage. Optimize is always great for that 15% weapon handling. Now for the scope, I'm running the 45% headshot damage scope. We do have a stability mod on here. We have the 5% damage to elites on the muzzle, and then we have the extra five rounds. But yeah, that's pretty much how I have this bad boy modded. Plus I have the nemesis for the holster talent for that extra 15% damage while I'm scoped in with my SVD. Now everything we had on the boomer build, everything we had on the weasel build, almost exactly the same except the holster. We do have a holster that has um, critical hit chance on here, but we have bloodlust as the talent. Weapon swapping grants that 15% weapon damage for five seconds. Now what we do is you run in there with your nemesis, you wait for Buddy and Lucy to come out. As soon as they're ready to shoot, you swap to your SVD, you scope in, and you just melt. The gloves are the other thing that we change. We have 12% marksman rifle damage. We have precise on here for that 15% headshot damage, and then marksman rifle damage and weapon damage on thing. So those are the two that you're switching on this build. Bloodlust and precise on the gloves. And then for... The skills, if you are going to run naked or perfectly naked, you do want to run the oxidizer. It's going to be the one at the far right. And what that does is that will deplete your armor. You shoot it down, some purple smoke will pop up, starts depleting your armor, and you'll get naked to proc. As soon as you swap, as soon as you can swap, you need to hurry up and move because um, they're pushing the button already. I was the last one to come in. Um, I'm going to get in ready. What I do is I drop my stinger hive. I, I have my um, nemesis out, I swap to my SVD, boom, 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 it's already over before it started, right? That quick, that's how fast that is right there. Now the next build is the Razorback build, and this one is pretty much, I want to say everybody runs this, almost everybody runs this build, except the aces and tip of the spear, but overall... You're just dropping the booster hives and you're waiting till you have a chance to swap. As soon as you have a chance to swap, I'll show you the build that I run. And there are some changes that I need you guys to make sure you pay attention to with this build. This one's going to be a lot different than the first three sniper builds. So this is the Tag 50 sniper build. There are some changes I really want you to pay attention to because for some reason, my backpack, God, I can't find it. So it kind of messed up how this build looks. But I'll show you guys... Um, the gloves that I would like to update and then the backpack where it need, really needs to be updated. So it's all focused around your sharpshooter specialization because attack 50 will be doing most of the damage except for the first part I'll be using my SVD. We are running 13 offensive, 1 defensive and 5 utility. I would like to get rid of that 1 defensive. For the mask we're running Sokolov mask. Now Sokolov has a lot of rolls that's why we're going to have a 2 piece plus we get that critical hit damage. We have 50% damage to elites. Two yellow rolls and then spot for the 15% weapon damage to post enemies. We're running a one piece wyvern for the 7% critical hit damage. We have 11% critical hit chance rolled in here, 11.5 critical damage, 15% weapon damage, plus we have vigilance for the 25% weapon damage. Now we do have an offensive mod on here that's going to give us marksman rifle damage, weapon damage, and another one that's going to give us marksman rifle and weapon damage. So an additional 12% weapon damage right there. For the holster, we're running a Douglas and Harding. This is our first piece with the 5% accuracy. We have 14.5% critical hit chance. We have critical on here for that critical hit damage. And then we have a yellow roll just so we can get our min of five yellows. For the knee pads, we're running our second piece of Douglas and Harding. 10% critical hit damage for a two piece. We have 9% critical hit chance roll on here. We have composure while on cover, grant 10% total weapon damage. Plus, we have an offensive mod on here for marksman rifle damage and weapon damage. Now, for the gloves, I have 7.5 critical hit chance. I'm going to pick that over marksman rifle damage any day of the week because, remember, the Tag 50 does not get affected by marksman rifle. It gets only affected by weapon damage. And then the health rolls where I could put marksman rifle since I do use my SVD at the very beginning of clearing out the ads at the front. But... I had to pick one or the other, so I went with the critical hit chance. We do have Perfectly Wicked on here. If you're going to get this active, you need to make sure you run a Stinger Hive. If you're not going to run any type of skill that is going to do a status effect, there's no reason to run Perfectly Wicked. But remember how Perfectly Wicked works is, say if I put a status effect on any enemy, the other enemies were going to take that 20% weapon damage. So if I get status effect on an enemy, I can get that additional 20% weapon damage against the Razorback.
For the backpack, we're running a third piece of Douglas and Harding for the 7% critical hit chance. We have 5% critical hit damage on here, 14% critical hit chance. We have a yellow roll, so that'll give us five total yellows. We have Spark on here for that 15% weapon damage, plus we have self-adjusting. Now, that is where you want to put the damage to elites. Now, say for some instance you can't get that backpack, well, on the knee pads, I'd rather sacrifice the composure for the damage to elite. So that's just something that you can play with. But ideally, I, I can't find the backpack. I, I don't know if I deleted it or something, but it's self-adjusting. That would be damage to elites right there. And that's going to be better than composure right there. But ideally, you want to have both of those because I'm going to be in cover and I'm going to be hitting hard with that damage. To for the skills, if I'm going to run Wicked, I'm going to run the Defender Drone and I'm going to run a Stinger Hive. If I'm not going to run... Per Wicked, I'm going to run a Jammer Pulse to help out with those drones that come out. Just a quick look with the TAC-50, I'm running 60% critical hit chance, 82% critical hit damage, 200% headshot damage. And if we go down, you'll see that my damage to elites is only 50%, but that should be 75%. The backpack is just the piece that's messed up. And that's the build right there. Those are all the builds I run for this, and you're going to see how fast we run through this right um there was a little hiccup where the the enemies seemed to not be taking any of my damage that i was hitting them with i don't know if i was just missing a lot of shots but i get to a point where the the enemy's just going juking he's juking left right you'll see right here in front of me like i hit him but it seems like it's not taking any damage and then he just keeps juking left or right i don't know what was going on dude was just on some on some of that g fuel right I actually got really frustrated with this guy. He just would not die, and I was like, you know what? I'm done with it. But anyway, so you do have a team in the front, and you do have a team in the back. So that is something that you guys need to pay attention to. As soon as they open up the, as soon as they open up the Razorback, everybody needs to be ready to go. We have our team in the front, breaking the front. We have our team in the back, breaking the back. And then we call it out. We sync up. We all fire at the same time and we destroy Razorback with one shot. So this build is made for Razorback to put out as much damage as possible and for everybody to hit at once. After that, you just go back to the terminal. Um, once yours lights up, you shoot it and that's how we beat it. If you guys have any questions on any one of these builds, you guys let me know in the comment section. Remember, if you're not gonna speed run, then ideally you could probably just run one SVD build through all the bosses all the way up to the final boss and then run the tag 50 build for the final boss remember having someone run tip of the spear and having someone run aces and eights is going to be a lifesaver so definitely that's going to be key and then the rest is just um depends if you guys want to just be under 10 minutes you could probably just run all run svd builds if you do want to have uh ar build and you don't want to speed run you can just run a typical clutch build um, well PVE clutch build so that's just some ideas for you guys hopefully that helps you guys out just want to say thank you guys again for all the support can't wait for March 3rd the new expansion but yeah this is how um, I ended up getting 8 minutes and 32 seconds my fastest time ever I appreciate all the support guys I'll see you guys in the next one nothing but skills is out